Hallelujah. Someone praise the Lord tonight. Are you alive? Are you ready for the Lord, for his goodness and his mercies that endures forever? I want us to stand up on our feet and just praise the Lord. Shake your body off a little bit. It's in the evening and I know some of us are tired. So just stand up. Shake up, shake up, shake up. Shake that body. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Father Lord, thank you for tonight. Praise his holy name for what we are hearing about Pakistan. I want to assure you that Africa is designed for this third reformation era. And Africa is going to lead it. And don't worry about what you're seeing in Nigeria. It's just a phase to teach us some lessons and to shake us up. But Nigeria is poised for the global space. We're about to take over at the gospel level, governmental level, and all levels by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Someone praise the name of the Lord. It is well. You may be seated. Tonight I want to acknowledge and salute my big brother. Apostle Victor Uchebulam, I admire him and his wife, Mama. Mama had to leave. She had some duties to attend. I appreciate this couple for their sacrifice. Let's celebrate sacrifice. Let's celebrate sacrifice. You don't want to know. These are people who are not doing church, but they are doing very well as big as churches. Let us celebrate this man and woman of God for all their sacrifice in the body of Christ. We bless you, sir. We bless you, sir. We thank God for your incredible grace, and we know that you've just started. You see that God is already giving you sons in Pakistan. Eh? <laughs> He's giving you sons in Angola. So God is speaking, you know? Aha. So there are matters arising. But I know that you're a faithful servant, and you will do well by doing God's bidding. Tonight, I want to greet all the leaders in the house. We thank all of you who have made all this happen because of you these conferences hold every year. There's a lot of sacrifice for every one of you. Let us appreciate the leaders who continually to labor together with Apostle and his wife. We want to thank God for your lives. Also, I bring greetings from Professor. Fortunately, he could not come. And uh, when Professor sent me, <laughs> I knew that he was confident enough that by the grace of God to work. So I even asked Prof. I said, Prof, where is your notes? Send your notes. He said, I don't have any notes. Go in my head, go for me. And I said, well, the Bible talks about blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Tonight we are here in the name of the Lord. I bring you greetings from my husband, who I will be married to next year, February, for 30 years of my life. <laughs> 30 years together and my children, uh, as it were. So we want to thank God and the ministry in which I run. I have three mandates in my life. I have a mandate to raise women leaders, to occupy their spheres of influence, and to establish God's kingdom, and to do God's agenda. I have another agenda, a mandate, is to help the church, to disciple the church for nation building. And of course, the third mandate is to do nation building. And by the grace of God, uh, God's visitation in my life began a transition on another dimension and trajectory of my Christianity. I've been born again for 40 years of my life plus. I'm 56 and I have no apologies. And so at, at my age, I cannot be apologizing. And I have seen the body of Christ and my spirit mourns. But I'm grateful because I think it was divinely orchestrated that I needed to hear the Pakistan story. And I am, I am mad. He knows me. There's a place that God winds me. And he knows why he winds me. Because as Africans, we are complaining about what is happening in our nation, which is rightfully so. Things are happening that shouldn't happen. But we're all responsible for what is happening in Nigeria. And by the grace of God, it will change. Don't trouble yourself too much about Nigeria. And African nations, get ready. Um, you, must, you have to partner with Nigeria. The African nations have to partner with Nigeria. Nigeria is a very strategic nation, and Africa is strategic for what we call the Third Reformation Era. There have been a First Reformation, Second Reformation. We are about to enter the wave of the Third Reformation Era. Some of you tonight, I may not have time for all that semantics, but my responsibility tonight is to introduce to you church 
and the fourth industrial revolution. I had a dream many years ago, um, Apostle, I had a dream one night I was in India preaching. And in the dream I was preaching, after I was preaching, they started stoning me in the dream in India. But when they stoned me, I disappeared from the stage. And they started looking for me. But what they didn't know, it was my hologram that was preaching. They started looking for the IP address all over India, looking for the IP address. But unfortunately for them, the IP address was in Nigeria. So they couldn't do anything. So when Prof told me to talk about the church and the fourth industrial revolution, God Lord reminded me of that dream. Africa missed out on the first, second, and the third industrial revolution, as it were. We didn't really participate. Africa was going through a whole lot of her problems, and so we were not part of a major work. Tonight, I can't teach this topic as deeply as we can go because of time, but I believe that uh, working with Apostle and many other ministers of God, we are preparing Africa for this age. If there's anything Africa needs to bring this gospel of the kingdom to the nations, is the fourth industrial revolution. It's a need. And uh, from the few slides, I'm going to show you that there's a scripture in Acts chapter 3, verse 20, and I think 21. And it said, Jesus will not return until everything is restored. Can they put that scripture up? Acts 17. I mean, Acts Chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, I think. 20 and 21. I have it here, but I just want us to see that first. Aha. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. So those of you, Jesus is coming soon. It's not a prayer point. And so, Father, tonight, even as we have this discussion around this very urgent and important topic, we ask for the Holy Ghost to take control. We ask for the teacher, the spirit of truth, to take absolute control tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus returning is not a prayer point. Even Jesus said, I don't know when I'm coming back. It's in the hand of who? The Father. But the Lord gave us a command to occupy until we come. And Apostle John kept repeating the scripture of Psalm 115 verse 16, that the heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but he has given us the earth to the sons of men. In other words, this earth has a divine mandate that we must complete. And for every generation, there is an assignment. And for the Africa in this time and season, is to bring the kingdom of God to come. And we cannot do that on our own. Next slide, please. And like you said, we probably will not be able to see the slide, but I just want to introduce to you certain things. I will step away when it gets to a certain image. We're talking about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution, as a word, began when mechanization of farming began in England, especially Great Britain. That's where it all began in the 18th century, where farming moved from just subsistence farming to mechanized farming, where mega farms and mega production and processes began to happen. But guess what? That very move of an opportunity started way back before that hour, because by the time the Bible was being printed in Germany for the first time when we had a printing press. It was designed by a Christian. A Christian designed a machine that brought the duplication of the Bible. So if God is against machines, why would he ask somebody to do it? Machines are not against us, but we need to learn how to use them with the wisdom of God. 
And so this first industrial revolution started in England and began to spread throughout Europe. And one of the things at that point, it was that farming became mechanized and people could process. Also what came about was the steam engines. The things like trains began to appear in the world for the first time. Things started happening that we do not know about. But guess what? I'm going to also show you a parallel that before the industrial revolution, God had sons and daughters who were catching vision of scientific, scientific vision. This vision was not only to go to the field to save souls, but this vision was to interpret the world in which they lived in. And how, like Pastor John was talking about the laws that govern this world, how it could be used to help humanity accelerate life. And because of this first industrial revolution, into prior to that, the mechanization began and life became easier and faster. Yet, a lot of people missed out. Because many people never transited. Many people never transited. And the problem with us, even at that time within the church age, prior to the industrial revolution, many did not transit. And many died of poverty. I'm coming. The second industrial revolution was all about gas, the discovery of gas in 1870. The first industrial revolution was 1765. The second was in, 18, in the 19th century, which is 1870. The second one came with these engines that begin to produce cars. Cars was produced, transportation began to take place, planes were designed by the Wright brothers whose father was a, was a reverend gentleman or a bishop and the sons told their dad, man will fly. And their dad, who is a minister of God, said if man needed to fly, God would give man wings. But they told their dad, we have seen a vision that mankind will fly. Today we have our brother from Pakistan. If he had decided to come by ship, but adventure by boat, if we will get here, we don't know when. But because of flights today, you and I, some of you came to this conference because somebody sat down, caught a vision from the Lord and designed planes. And cars were designed for the first time and all the Ford companies in the United States, especially the second, um, this revolution actually multiplied in the United States and a whole lot of mechanization. Just allow me to give you a bit of history. The third industrial revolution started in 1969 with what we call electronics and nuclear. Of course, at the second industrial revolution, one of the key things that also happened was telephones. The basic communication of mankind by Graham and many others who created the telephone. Today, we have moved from the telephone to the digital telephones. Because somebody started the scientific discovery and many of them, 90% of all inventors who created significant change were Christians. But as we went further, we began to lose our trend in our involvement. In the third industrial revolution, after 100 years of the second, nuclear energy came up. Nuclear power. And of course, what did man use nuclear power for? Nuclear energy is one of the best energies, especially that we need in Africa for electricity. We need it for a whole lot of mobility. But nuclear power also has a power for destruction. Every rev industrial revolution, everything God created like money is neutral. It is the hand that has it that matters. And the only people destined to create the new man on earth, to design new individuals who can change the world, is the church. So church is not about going for service. It's about learning how God thinks and how you too can think. And until we change our ways and our mind as God's people, we will miss on the opportunities that God has. The fourth industrial revolution is where we are. In actual fact, the fifth is around the corner. The fourth industrial revolution started in 2000, where many of these, our uh, children were born, which we call millennials and Gen Z's later on. The fourth industrial revolution, we shift, we see a shift to renewable energy such as solar, wind, and geothermal. 
However, the momentum comes not from the shift in energy, but from the acceleration of what we call digital technology. The internet and the digital world mean a real-time connection within more and more components together. As the development of this industrial internet of things, cloud technology, artificial intelligence continue, a virtual world will merge with physical world solution for a myriad of companies around the world. When the computers began to come out, many in the church gates said it was Antichrist. Hello, how many of you remember? Oh, the Antichrist is coming. Oh, the Antichrist is coming. But we forget that there is a Christ who is already here. The anti of Christ. What is the Antichrist coming to do? Governance. What is the Christ doing? According to Isaiah, he said, the increase of the governance, there shall be no end. We read today, Matthew 24, Pastor John said, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Our brother Sahid connected to him. Where? On Facebook. And many of us as Christians have not made the transition. The world is owning it. In 1999, I, I was those days, I used to listen to the cassettes. You know, remember cassettes? How many of you ever used cassettes? Cassette, cassette. <laughs> the cassette of Kenny Copeland. And Kenneth Copeland was saying that he had a retreat. He has this annual retreat that he does one week, lock himself up with the Lord. And the Lord said to him, in the dawn of this millennium, which is 2000 upward, there's technology coming into the nations that the world has never seen. And he said something to Kenneth Copeland. He said, I am ready, but my church is not ready. So what happens? The technological space is being owned by unbelievers who are using it. To propagate the gate of hell. They were those who are the church of Jesus Christ. Who are supposed to excel in the excellence of the mind of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God will come. Everybody who has gone to heaven talks about the invisibility of God. The beauty of holiness. The excellence. Today we have digital TVs. All of us we have smartphones. But the Africans have not produced anything, neither contributed to the digital age. Of course, we have them working abroad. Don't doubt yourself. We have smart minds all over the world. But as Africans, within the African context, we have not owned this space. With 20 million children out of school in Nigeria, and other countries like Uganda, high level of children on the street, youth unemployment, there's a digital age that can close the gap and take 20 million children out of the streets. Yes, in Pakistan, there's slavery, but guess what? Man of God, there is slavery in Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria. As we're sitting here right now, people are slaves in northern Nigeria. And that's why I am so in towards Pakistan for the release of Nigeria. Because Nigeria must be free. If you watch our children, our children have one of the most excellent capacity. You think the Yahoo Yahoo boys who have entered this gate in the wrong way, if they had the moral excellence, can you imagine what they would do with the computers? Remember they came with it, it's a talent. Your two-year-old knows more about the phone than you do. So they came with this, it's a mode, it's a code. And so in this new order, go back to the one with a new order, a new world, a new world, artificial intelligence. Uh -huh. Man, people are already afraid of the robots. The robots don't have problems. The robot operates under the authority of mankind. Everything is under man. Samet, say, who has man that I am mindful of him? Who is the son of man that you created? You put everything under him. And the man that has more authority and all power that has been bestowed upon that man is the church of Jesus Christ. And yet, we do not understand. By the time we can grab this fourth industrial revolution, 
we will preach in different parts of Pakistan without being there physically. The omniscient and the character, the nature of God is being shared. God is coming down to share his nature, but we can't see it. A time will come he will be in the camp in Mimo State. But he will be seeing you and having a conversation, but you're not there. We're talking about accelerating the gospel of the kingdom. You think you're going to accelerate it when every time there's a threat for a bomb? We need technology to subvert what is happening within the wicked walls of the Taliban system and every system that is against mankind. Surgery is being done through telemedicine. Doctors from abroad are doing surgery in Nigeria without coming to Nigeria. Our children, all they need in the villages and everywhere are computer tablets that have connection through solar system. But they don't need the internet. We block certain internet lines. All they have is education. Every child with a tablet across Africa, one teacher to 1,000 students. And overnight, we will be teaching mathematics, chemistry, physics, sciences, moral studies. And our children will be Our children will be discipled overnight. God has given us a weapon to bring judgment, especially to those gates that are against Christianity. And let me tell you, I, I cannot apologize. And I will not apologize. And that's why some people like us, we are also in the governance space because we must advocate and lobby. This matter will not end just here. We must liberate those souls in Pakistan. By two weapons. The weapon of money and the power of the Holy Ghost. We have not contacted the Holy Ghost yet. Who is Taliban before the Holy Ghost? One earthquake is enough. I am not interested in what the devil is doing. I want to know what God is telling the church. We need to wake up as a church of Jesus Christ in this hour. We need to understand. I want us to see this slide, the one on the latter days with the book of Daniel clearly written in it. Daniel saw many visions. Let us have that in view. The book of Daniel 1. Go ahead. There's so much. We will always come back and continue. Go, 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 go. Not this one, the one with Daniel. Yes. The Bible says in the latter days, information will increase. The conference is talking about the glory of the latter house. God said, as long as I live, my glory will cover this earth. As a water cover the sea. God cannot lie. How is he going to do it? By you, some of you, in our old age, to go up and down, up and down, up and down. God is not a fool. He's a strategist. And Daniel understood this in the vision God showed him. He said, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. To lay the information highway of this gospel of this kingdom has become an opportunity for us to organize our lives. If you are a Christian and you are still struggling with just an email address, we need to know how we can pay money and use money without money being tracked. Uh -huh. The problem with technology is the character of the individuals. If the church can build character, we can own it and subdue the enemy with it. On every quarter, in every highway, on one side of the world, you'll be hearing Dukapakataya, Zegabo, Shakata, da 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 da. On another part of the world, you will hear, Don't say the Lord. On another part of the Lord, on the world, technology, education, owning governance, 
expediting elections and making sure we own it on every side because he who owns the social space owns governance you want to be a governor you want to own this nation let us get out of our churches and do social work if the church takes out 20 million children out of school you think they won't give us the election nobody can win that election The Bible says, if salt has lost its saltiness, wherein shall it be salted? But it's good for nothing but to be trampled upon. Say, let your light so shine. Acts chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Let's just have that for our memory. The church is the house on the hilltop. He said, in the last day, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be the highest of all. <laughs> The most important place on earth, it will be raised above other hills. And people all over the world will stream into it. And a man like John Wesley was a reformation, reformer and he prepared people for this industrial age with character. This was a man who did so much for his people. I'll just read a bit about John Wesley. Some of you do not understand, when John Wesley came into, appear into England, England was in destructive mode. England was not the England you know today. 1739 to his death in 19, 1791, Wesley was indefatigable. His energy was prodigious. He organized hundreds of local Methodist society after each place he visited. Established and kept an eye on schools, he did clinics, he did a whole lot. And of course, a whole lot of books. He composed a whole lot of things in English. Volumes of books were written. Remember, at this time, the machines were already available for the books to be written. He continued to do noble works. But if we see the impact of this man, one of the uh, people that he worked with, that he converted by his words, was William Wiberforce, who was instrumental to the end of slavery. A man ended an age-old trade and fought for the end of that slavery. And so shall apostle and our brother in Pakistan end that slavery. We're going to end it at various levels. Up to getting to the State Department of the United States. We're going to make a case before UK Parliament. You see, when we're talking about the 21st century leader of the church, is at all strata. Every Christian who is in governance must think about what is happening in our world. We have not prepared a people who understand that the governance of God is upon our lives to rule and to do the will of God. You don't go to government because you want to have a fine face. Or you go to government to make noise. Governance is about doing the will of God. This John Wesley Raise even people indirectly like our dear sister Mary Slessor who ended the killing of twins in Nigeria. I hope you know if you're a twin today, those days in Nigeria, especially in the east of Nigeria and the south-south, you will be killed when you were born. But one woman rose up and planted a different kind of missionary work to end slavery and the killing of twins. In Nigeria. Skip a few slides and let's just go to the dignity of labor and we'll begin to conclude there. The church and the industrial revolution requires that the church raises a people of faith. The major contribution of the Protestant faith to the world was dignity of labor, hard work. You heard Pastor John talking about that. Both Martin Luther and John Calvin taught people that hard work itself is not slavery. Work is a gift that God gave man. Slavery is an oppression from humanity. Germans were once lazy and drunkards, but today everything made in Germany is different because people's minds were changed. The streets of London was full of poverty. People's children were being sold by a pound a month because they had to hire their children out to eat in England. England's poverty in the days of Charles Dickens was a reality that England was very poor. But people rose up and changed England. Our call in this conference that you will not go out 
lacking understanding that the glory of God is revealed in all mountains of influences. And that the technological capacity for us to take this gospel further than we can ever imagine is upon us. And so the outcomes of this teaching, if you flip to the next slide of the outcome of this teaching, people were taken off the streets, created a mindset of becoming creators like God, respect and the dignity for work, understanding that wealth and success is not a matter of luck. Superstition regarding work and wealth was broken. Wealth comes only from hard work. They taught their people to work hard. So instead of using technology for games and to play, they began to teach people how to use technology for work. Factories, industry began to spring up. They led the industrial revolution with 75% of the invention at that time, discoveries, were credited to the Protestants who were taught in the culture of the dignity of labor. New society developed, the descendants in other continents began to rise. The church was the foundation of the major universities that you know today in the world. Whether it's Harvard University, Yale University, Cambridge and Oxford were all founded by Christians. But today, unbelievers own it. What went wrong? After the great printing of press, with people like Robert Boyle, who discovered what we call the discovery of the first gas law. Another man called Antonio uh, Lovazier, a Roman Catholic, who discovered combustion, respiration, oxygen, and hydrogen in water. Michael Faraday, we all know, was a devout member and an elder in the church. He discovered the electromagnetic induction. He discovered the first experiment link between light and magnetism, which today all phones and all interconnection of what we're doing is happening. Isaac Newton was a believer. Passionate, descending Protestant who spent more time in Bible study than maths and physics. However, he invented calculus, built the first ever reflective telescope and many other things. And we have a black man called George Washington Carver who was a Protestant evangelist. These men discover how to repair the soil in agriculture using peanuts. We have a woman, Florence Nightingale, who redesigned nursing and brought nursing care to the highest height that after 200 years, her work still stands. As an African, in 2030, Africa, Sub-Sahara Africa, we have the highest children under 25 in the entire world. If you're not in the digital space, how can you reach the youths? We need digital technology to be in 10 places at the ten, same time. We need digital technology to reach the youth with one press of a button, we can reach one million at the same time, even more. Today, with all of us wanting to write our books, AI can translate messages into text, text into editing, editing into a book. And God has made life much easier for us. But we can become lazy. Well, mentally lazy, spiritually prayerful, but mentally lazy. There's a call for reformation in this hour. What is the problem with the church today as I conclude? Is the separation of a word called secular and sacred. In God, there's no secular, there's no sacred. Because out of God came light. Out of God came trees. Why do you think people worship it? Because they find God even in the tree. But it's just a fraction of him. The earth is woes, the Lord's. So the earth should be sacred too. Because it belongs to the Lord. The sun and the moon came from him. You need to recognize that everything from the realm of the spirit must touch the earth in its fullness. Nothing is untouchable for God. Everything must respond to God's counsel, will, and purposes. Whatever we are doing as a church, we were born by the excellent God. And so excellence must be found in the church. The level of mediocrity that has taken over the church must stop. That lying devil that tells us we can do things anyhow and win the world must stop. We are the most packaged individuals that must be on the face of the earth. 
from the John Gilex of the ages past and the Smith Wigglesworth who shook the world. But in the shaking of the world, they also raised men to shake and make a difference in every sphere of influences. Today, Nigeria is suffering at a financial level. Where is the response of the church? We are the salt. We are the light. A city set on the hill cannot what? Be hidden. Is said nobody lights a lamp and hides it inside church under the big bushel. The biggest bushel is called church building. Where we are sitting pretty. And there are slaves in Pakistan. We are sleeping pretty. Nigeria has 20 million children out of school. Churches are empty on some other days. Mosques are empty on some other day. We claim religion. But we do not claim righteousness. Our beloved John Wesley says, individual redemption must lead to social change. If a people are truly redeemed, everything around them must be redeemed. Just like as our brother has been redeemed, that slavery in Pakistan must come to an end. And the slavery in Nigeria North must also come to an end. And a few places in the South South also. After all, it was men that rose up and ended the Osu culture within the Eastern, Africa, Eastern Nigeria. And for those of you at every point in wherever you're located in the world, listen very clearly. That laziness must stop. You must get into the technology. You must own it around your own space. Today, people are using it for marketing. You sit in your own house, you're marketing to the whole world. I have a young lady who I raised, helped. Today, she, don't, she can't even sew for me anymore. I, I, no, I'm, auntie, no, I, I have orders from the U.S. <laughs> and also, those ones, by the time they convert their dollar, I can't compete with them now. Only because she put herself where? In, on Instagram. Some of you have messages to the world, but you have not packaged yourself. Tonight, I came to challenge you. The fifth industrial revolution is already around the corner. What's the intent? He said, before technology becomes a problem, we need to raise the humans that will handle it well. Who is it that can raise those humans than us? It is us that has been given the mission to go ye into all where? The world. And make what? Disciples at every sphere of influence. Whether there be government, economy, and everywhere possible. I conclude with this vision that I had with a young man. He studied engineering, engineer, and he's doing finance. So I said to him, why are you doing finance? He said, auntie, finance is what I really wanted to do. I said, can you find the nexus between finance and engineering? As we were talking, man of God, I had an open vision. I saw an ATM who was an ATM machine speaking back to us. You ask the ATM machine what you want, the ATM machine speaks back to you. Right there and there. And I say, God, what is this? He said, you people have not seen anything yet in this world. Today, people have homes that are speaking to them. The next level of fridges that are being created is that a fridge will tell you your milk has finished. Do you want it replaced? In America today, they talk to their television. Please give me channel 44. And yet Africa, we are still shaking over witchcraft. We are still afraid of mommy inside water. When people have dove into the water to search what the invisible things of God is under there. I challenge you today that this fourth industrial revolution, even the fifth, the so-called antichrist, according to scripture, whether it's three and a half years or seven years, he doesn't own it. Jesus Christ has a 1,000 reign coming. He has an eternity coming. And guess what? All of us were coming back. How do you think we're going to accelerate these things to happen? By going up and down with our shoes and having broken legs? The only way to do this is to rise up, embrace the fourth industrial revolution, and change our world. God bless you.
Thank you for the opportunity. I want us to rise up on our feet. I just want to pray one prayer tonight. Because prayer is what I also do. Do not be mistaken by my looks. I hate the devil with everything that is within my soul. But I also recognize the power of the Most High God. Father, tonight, behold your people and especially behold your servant. Great and mighty things are about to happen. Some of you need your children around you to help you. Let me tell you, I surround myself with youths. Because they are the ones who own this hour. I train them with the character is required, but I need their technological know-how. I have many books I need to write fast. I have many nations I need to touch. Right now, I'm online and I'm already ministering in four nations. And I'm only online partially. I have not expanded my territorial capacity. I'm teaching and I'm recording messages that are worth gold in many sectors. I want you to pray for the grace of God to help you. Some of you are born before technology. You're so slow. Even with your phone, most of us find phone, you're using just 10%. Your phone is an office. Your phone is an office. The iPad, you may not need it, you may need it. That's why today, if you steal an iPad, except the person really doesn't want to find it, the iPad will not work for the person who picked it up. Especially the latest iPad. You can't use it if you were not the original. After a while, it self destructs. Technology is getting to a point. That God is asking the people of God, when will you use it? If our apostle did not even at least register part one on Facebook, how would he have met? But guess what? You remember in 2020, the youths, in one week, they raised $8 million through digital. They circumvented the banks. The banks were shocked. These children, in one week, they raised $8 million, not Naira. What is about to happen, the global prophecy is that money is coming into the kingdom for a kingdom agenda. And some of us cannot even do transfer. Transfer, you're afraid of transfer. Hey, let them not cheat me. Hey, let no one for one nine. Hey, every day now, hey, hey, hey. When will your confidence in the Holy Ghost rise? All knowledge is bestowed in him. All good and perfect gifts comes from the Lord. The enemy can use it to thwart. But guess what? We can seize it back. And I believe in the days and the years to come, this church of Jesus Christ shall march forward. And oh God of Jacob, behold Africa. Behold your beloved nation, Nigeria. For we have exported the kingdom on churches with great labor. Yes, we have so much unrighteousness here and there. But what we have sown towards the kingdom. And what we have sown at the diplomatic level. Fighting for South Africa. Fighting for nations. We ask that this nation will know no rest until you invade it with your power. And we pray for this church, this ministry. Because it's a form of a parachurch. That by the next 12 months, the influence of your son will even understand himself. As for Pakistan, both the diplomatic, heavily diplomatic, ex-diplomats that will come and invade that territory with a salvation message will be gone. As for Bibles, it will flood the land by the power of your spirit. Holy Ghost, it is your season. Is the third hour. The hour of the Lord Jesus Christ. After 2,000 years ago, we are on the third day. We ask you to use us. Make us in your image. Let us become more like you. That all that you have given us, we will use to your glory. We cover the generation that is before us, the young ones. That the enemy is stealing into a dark side of technology. You will raise incredible voices to save them. Because through these young ones, this gospel shall be preached. Thank you, Abba Father, for all that you have done tonight. To you be all glory. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Let's jam our hands together. Let's put our